The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your socials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. As always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. Don't forget, all these things are free to do. They take seconds, a bit like my sex life. Anyway, I'll have to edit that bit out in case the missus sees this one. Anyway, so just want to do a little quick stream. There's been a big announcement that's made today. It was actually made whilst we did the the live stream for the Celta Vigo preview with my brother. And if you haven't seen that, please go back on the channel, take a look at it. But it, it's amazing what a difference a year makes. One year ago today, as I record this, it's the 10th of August. And one year ago, we made the first signing of the last summer window under the previous regime, the previous manager. And he signed Edson Alvarez. Good signing for the club, no no doubt about it. But that was our first signing of the summer transfer window. Fast forward 12 months, and here we are today on the 10th of August, 2024. We have just made our seventh signing, I believe it is, of the transfer window. I'm just going to have a little look here. We've signed Max Kilman. We've signed Crescencio Somerville. We've signed Nicholas Fulkrug. We've signed Luis Guillerme. We've signed Guido Rodriguez. We've signed Wes Fodderingham. And today, after a bit of a protracted saga, it has to be said, involving ourselves, Nice, Juventus were obviously on the periphery as well. But ultimately, Tim Stighton has done the job. He's got in there. He's got stuck in. He's weaved his magic wand. He's done a little bit of schmoozing. And now, as we speak, Jean-Claire Todibo, the twice-capped French international, and I'm sure there will be many more to come, Jean-Claire Todibo has now been unveiled officially as a West Ham player. We'd heard that he'd passed the medicals. We would heard that, that all those formalities were done, and it was just a case of ironing out a few little kinks and whatever. Jean-Claire Todibo is now a West Ham player. Now, officially... Right now, he is only with us on loan. However, there is, the way the deal has been structured, it is a loan with an obligation to buy at the end of the season when he will then be a permanent transfer from that point on. This is a really good signing. We've obviously sort of bolstered the attack, obviously, with the signings that I've mentioned there, Full Krug and Somerville and all the rest of it. All these signings, Guillerme, although I think he's probably one for the future in truth. But we've obviously bolstered our attack. But I think that the thing that we really needed to focus on, by and large, was defensively. We shipped, what, 60 league goals last season? And that's that's we can't do that again and expect to get away with it. So we've obviously brought in Max Kilman, £40 million investment. A lot of people saying, is he worth it? Look, I guess we're only going to know in the fullness of time, quite frankly. But we've obviously done it again. We brought in another centre-back alongside him, which will obviously mitigate the loss, if you believe it's a loss, actually, of Kurt Zuma when he goes off to um, the, the UAE league with um, 
some team that I've never heard of, quite frankly. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm no expert on on that, you know, that footballing league. But we have got in Jean-Claire Todibo to mitigate that loss in inverted commas. Well, who is he? Who is Jean-Claire Todibo? Well, he's 24 years of age. So we're signing a player that is approaching his peak years. He's not the other side of the hill. We're not signing a 33, 34, 30, 35-year-old knackered defender who's sort of got bandy legs and whatever. This is a guy that's actually got his best years still ahead of him. 24 years of age. And as I say, he's come in from Nice. Now, it obviously took a little bit of a while to get on because Juventus wanted to do uh, work if they could get a transfer. The financials that we were putting on the table for Nice were superior to what that Juventus had, had stumped up. Now, I understand, OK, I'm a West Ham fan, but I do understand that as, as a French guy in Jean-Claire Todibo, he's got two clubs that are interested in him. One is West Ham United. One is Juventus. Now, I love West Ham. I'm a West Ham fan. And I'm guessing you watching this, you're a West Ham fan as well. Otherwise, why are you watching a West Ham fan YouTube channel? But I can understand that he would be looking at Juventus, multi-time Serie A winners, perennial qualifying for the Champions League, won it on multiple occasions to boot, had lots of great players down the year that have, years that have played for them, like Zinedine Zidane, for example, Michel Platini back in the day. This is a super power, super power of European football. One of the, the, the founding members of the European Super League, which obviously never got off the ground, but they were one of the catalysts behind that. I believe that they're, I don't know if they're still owned by the Fiat Motor Company. So they're a real heavyweight. So I can understand that from Jean-Claire Todibo's point of view, if he's got two clubs that are interested, one of them's Juventus, one of them's West Ham, I can understand that maybe he might have been saying, well, let me just assess my options here. That's That's within his right to do, no problem. But I think it's taken so long for Juventus to either you know, do what they got to do or get off the pot, quite frankly, that in the end, both Nice and the player have just gone to the point where they've realised that look, this is just getting stupid now and we need to have some clarity on how we're going to go. And that's where Tim Steyton's nipped in. He's taken advantage. He's gone over there. We obviously saw the photograph from Fabrizio Romano of Tadebo, Tim Steyton on the jet, bringing him back to London to do the medical which I believe took place yesterday, which he passed, as I recalled this on Saturday, the 10th of August. He's obviously, he's come over, done the medical. They've ironed out the contract. They've ironed out the personal terms. He's signed on the dotted line. He's now been officially unveiled as a West Ham United player. Six foot three. He's played for some clubs down the years, principally Barcelona and Benfica as well. He's been on the books of them. Toulouse was where he made his pro debut. He's also had time at Schalke in the Bundesliga. Uh, and obviously, like I say, he's he's made a lot of appearances for Nice. In total, he has made um, 119 appearances for Nice in all competitions. Um, that includes his loan spell that he had in the 2020-21 season. So, as I say, it's, it's very exciting. A player that, as I say, still has his prime years ahead of him. Now, a few little things about him as well, just a little bit of backstory. Although he's a French international, he wasn't actually born in France. He was actually born in Cayenne, which is the capital of the French overseas region of French Guyana. So he's uh, he's obviously from that neck of the woods. And he's he had actually an accident, a car accident when he was a kid, which if things had gone a certain direction, he might have he might might not have been a footballer. Um, he was involved in a, in a car crash. Obviously, the, the damage that he sustained from that. Um, he got a serious leg injury. He was nine years of age, so it, it could have gone one of two ways. Um, but he obviously he recovered and he's he's come, he's become a professional footballer. And like I say, he he plied his trade for a period of time at two of the European heavyweights in their name of Barcelona and Benfica. OK, he didn't play an awful lot of games for either of them, in, in all truth. Um, for Barcelona, he only made five appearances. And for Benfica, he only made two appearances, seven appearances in total. But hey, do you know what? He's made seven more appearances for two former European champions than you or I will ever make. Unless, of course, you've played for Barcelona or Benfica, which I'm probably guessing you haven't. But there you go. 
he's obviously he's got a lot of potential ahead of him. Um, as I say, he's got two international caps for the French national team. He didn't make the squad for the Euros that have just finished, but I, I suspect that he will be now. He's playing. He's going to be playing regular first team football, Premier League football. He's going to be on the radar of the French manager, which I believe is still Didier Deschamps. Um, yeah, this is this is a really good signing. He's obviously he's come in. He's seen that we're a, a project. He's seen that we're on the up. He likes he's likes the business that we're doing and the players that we're bringing in. And he is going to come come alongside Max Kilman at that centre back pairing. It may even be who knows. It may even be that we obviously ha still have. Nayef Aguer in the building, there might be times when the manager, depending upon what he's looking to achieve, depending upon the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition that we're against and all of the other facets about the contest that we're about to take place in, he might actually go with three centre-backs and it might actually be Tadebo, Kilman and Aguer as a, as a three. There's lots of particular ways that it can be distributed as well. Just having a little look on the website, and this is a direct quote from Jean-Claire Tadebo, who will wear the number 25 shirt for the upcoming season. Tadebo says, I am really excited to be signing for West Ham United. This is a dream to come true, to play in the Premier League, the best league in the world. This is an amazing opportunity for me at a club with huge ambition, who want to really make progress under the new head coach. It feels like the right time to be coming to West Ham in the heart of London with an amazing, passionate fan base. I'm so excited to pull on the West Ham shirt and to play at the London Stadium in the Premier League. Tim Stighton is also quoted on the website as saying this is another significant signing for the football club and shows the attraction of West Ham for top players in Europe. Uh, Tim Stighton, take a bow. He goes on to say, it's no secret that jean Claire is a player we've been tracking for some time, so we're delighted to have got this signing over the line ahead of the start of the new season. He's got proven pedigree in European football, especially in France, where he has shone in recent years, showing all of the qualities as one of the finest ball-playing centre-halves in Ligue 1. There was huge interest from across Europe for his signature this summer, and we're once again indebted to the board for backing us in bringing a player who is approaching the peak years of his career. There you go. See exactly what I said. I'm sure the West Ham fans are excited about jean Claire's arrival, and we can't wait to see him playing in a West Ham shirt. Now, I don't suspect that that debut will come today when we're obviously playing Celta Vigo in the Betway Cup at London Stadium. I don't suspect it will come today. I think it's too soon. May well be that he's paraded on the pitch either before the game kicks off or at half time, But I really do suspect that he will be making his debut in the game one week from now against Aston Villa at London Stadium. The pieces of the jigsaw are starting to fall into place. And I'm also hearing, as I just before I hit record on this video, I'm also hearing that it looks like Manchester United are making a play for um, Mazrawi, their right back, and obviously that will then, you suspect, set the wheels in motion that once they've got him in the building, they're really going to want to get Aaron Wambisaka out the door. So I suspect that at that point, movement, there will be moves there to try and make that move happen as far as Aaron Wambisaka coming to the London Stadium is concerned. If we can get that signing over the line, if we can get a right back in, then for me, I think we've probably done all the business we need to do. As I say, that would then make it an eighth signing of the transfer window. It's been busy, busy, busy for Tim Stighton. He's been back and forth on the jet. He's been getting the old uh, mileage points as for for his, uh, his account. A little bit of money in the pocket, I suppose. But he's been getting the business done. And it, it's good stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it bodes well. We're getting the pieces of Jigsaw. We're backing the manager. We're hopefully going to shape this squad into his image and hopefully we can make a play for European competitions. Who knows? Maybe, maybe even make a deep cup run. But tell me what your thoughts are. Jean-Claire Tadebo, give me your thoughts on the transfer window so far. Give me your thoughts on possibly some business that might be yet to unfold. 
possibly in the shape of Aaron Wambisaka. You've got a comment section below. Please do get involved. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And as it says there, please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your socials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. Thank you very much indeed for your support in this endeavor. Don't forget, all these things are free to do. They take seconds. We won't spam you. We won't have your bank account details. It's completely safe, completely free, and it helps grow the channel. Thank you very much indeed for your support. And please don't forget to give your support to the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity. We'll see you next time. Come on, you Irons. Let's go. The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details industry. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Oh,